Hello. So for today's lesson, what I am going to show you a little bit about is what we call direct modeling with Infusion. Okay, and direct modeling is a really great way, great way for us to make fast edits uh, without having to go through the rigmarole of um, sketching, extruding, running feature sets, modifiers, things like that. Okay, um, the example that I've got here, I drew up off. Uh, if we come a look over and have a look, uh, this guy just here, okay? So I've drawn up this little bracket, and um, if, say, we were doing some 3D printing of this and we decided, actually, I want to make some simple modifications, ideally, we want to be able to do that really straightforward, really fast. So just to run us through how I've built this object, if we come back to the start, is I basically started with my sketch, Okay, and then from there I have extruded the sketch and then I've performed the fillets and then I've shelled the object. Okay, and if we come back and have a look, that's essentially the object that I've made, this guy just here. Okay, so that's great. I've also made a little modification to put the little hole in the front. Um, now, if I want to make modifications to this at the moment, that base shape, say for instance I want to make this slightly taller, what I would have to do is I would have to go back in and I would have to modify that original sketch. Okay. With direct modelling, it allows us a bit more flexibility and also makes things a bit faster. So, for instance, in this situation, what I can do is if I grab that top face and I right click and I come to this guy here, press pull, click on the press pull, and it comes up with our selection chain. And you can see that it's allowing me to pull that face up. And as a result, I'm extending this body so it's getting thicker, okay? So that's the initial press pull function. If I was to, um, select multiple faces, and this is where we just have to be a little bit of, a little bit careful with press pull, is you can see that it's actually symmetric action, so it's moving away from each other. So that's not necessarily what we want. In a situation like this, if I wanted to make this section taller, how would I do it? So i do the same thing again. I'll grab those two faces, but instead of press pulling, I'm gonna go move copy, okay? I click on move copy and we can see that we're getting that freeform widget that we were using earlier. Now move copy and now, now enables us to shift it and everything's moving together as one in unison. Okay? We still have a great deal of control so we can tell it how far we want to move copy and you can see in the negative digits I'm going back below the original point and in the positive I'm above the original point. So that's the move copy. And the move copy also allows us to rotate, okay? And that's a really useful feature as well. To be able to do that parametrically, that's several steps that we would have to do in terms of sketching, extruding, cut extruding, whereas by using the move copy function, we have this great versatility, okay? Another thing to note is that you can press pull pretty much any feature. Okay, so you can see here that these holes that I created, I can come back in and go, actually, you know what? I want those holes to be a little bit bigger. And I can just grab the slider or I can modify and say, I want it bang on 7mm. And that's gonna be really useful if you're doing things like rapid prototyping, 3D printing, and you need to adjust tolerance of components that are gonna to fit together. I can also come in on these features, in this case, the fillet, and I can grab the fillet and I can adjust it. So it's really great for working on the fly and being able to make these changes. You will notice though that it's adjusting all the features. So I used one feature for all of these edges and so I'm adjusting that feature across all of them. Okay? Um, and that is direct modeling.